Hey everyone, Ashley with Techno Buffalo here. You've got John's opinion on the iPhone event, and now it's my turn. Here's what I think of Apple's newest smartphones. Well, Apple's had their big keynote, and Tim Cook & Co. showed off not one, but two new iPhones, the 5S and the 5C. It's been pretty interesting watching the reactions to the devices online. While some people absolutely find these two phones boring by Apple standards, and others are really excited about the new technology and colors. Well, first, before I get started, I want to talk really quickly about something Steve Jobs said back when the original iPhone was released. He said that Apple was five years ahead of the competition, and I think that statement was absolutely right. The original iPhone launched in 2007, and now, six years later, every major smartphone OS has an equally powerful and capable flagship. At this point in the game, hardware and features are pretty iterative across the board for all of the OSs, and there isn't really anything at this time that to me is considered innovative. I actually think that as a tech community, we love to throw that word around a little bit too much and may have diluted the true meaning of the word innovation, but that's a rant for another day. The point I'm making is smartphone press events are starting to be kind of humdrum, and the reason why is because it's a lot like new car models. Uh, so at first, cars were really exciting, and as we've seen new technologies show up, they are really cool. But unless you completely redesign an existing model, put in crazy technology, or launch an entirely new line, you're not really doing anything that's worthy of a frenzy, right? So that's kind of how I feel about this iPhone event. Apple's been doing a pretty good job with a design uh, cycle of design change one year and then optimize the following year for the S model, and that's exactly what they've done with the iPhone 5S. The 5S is an awesome phone, and anyone using the iPhone 4S or previous will find it an easy decision to upgrade if they have the opportunity. I'll probably upgrade to the 5S, if only because my iPhone's paid off and I like having the newest tech in my pockets. It's interesting, one of the things that I find to be different about the way Apple does things as opposed to Samsung, um, of course the two big comparisons everyone likes to make, is you know Apple tends to pick one or two things to really kind of dive deep into, uh, and they like to sort of bring you things that you're, you know, they're hoping you're using on a daily basis. This is like things that make your life easier and they automate things, while Samsung tends to say, what's the craziest thing that we can think of, and then let's just cram it all in one phone. Now that's not to say it's a bad thing. I think a lot of people obviously really like their Galaxy devices. Uh, the Note 3 was amazing when I saw it at IFA in Berlin, uh, but they do have certainly a different way of doing things. And so I think that in that way, uh, Apple's sort of iterative design can feel a lot more boring compared to somebody like Samsung who brings out, you know, guns a blazing. they've got, you know, they're throwing spaghetti against the wall, it's crazy. <laughs> and um, so I think that that's one of those things that is just different about Apple compared to Samsung. So whether that's your cup of tea or not is up to you, uh, it's not up to me, but I do think that Apple tends to dive really deeply into one or two specific product designs, so Touch ID being one of them. You know, Touch ID is a really interesting piece of technology. Um, this seems like obviously something Touch ID you're going to be using all the time. So, and I really like how they've integrated it in a way that it's going to act as your password. So when you go to buy an app, you just put your thumb on there or your finger or whatever, whatever finger you choose to do for Touch ID. Um, but I, I like this idea of sort of uh, the future of this. So this is a first generation concept. Um, the Atrix did it kind of poorly, uh, but. But generally speaking, this is, you know, kind of a newer technology, this sort of biometric identification. And I think that if Apple opens the API, which I'm not saying that they will, it's actually in and of itself, its existence sort of suggests that we're really getting into sort of this area of technology. And that to me is really exciting. Okay, so now on to the more interesting of the two devices to me, which is the iPhone 5C. Honestly, I was totally wrong about this one. I genuinely thought Apple would have taken the iPhone 4S's guts and dropped it into a four inch retina screen with the same colorful polycarbonate shell that the 5C has. That way they would have had a low cost iPhone for emerging markets uh, that could have been free on contract and they could have also dumped their 30 pin port in one fell swoop, which that was really surprising to me that they kept that around for another year. It also makes me wonder if we'll even see a, a 6C next year and just maybe push the iPhone 5S and the 5C down in price to make way for the iPhone 6 when it's announced. Uh, it's all a little bit odd in terms of supply chain, at least to me, because why wouldn't you want the same size screen across all three of your devices? But 
I don't know. Maybe they are going to have a shortage of retina displays. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe they're expecting them to sell huge in China. And uh, maybe they said, you know what, maybe we should keep the 4S around to, uh, to prevent shortages for our four inch retina display. I don't know. I can't, I can't possibly speculate about such things. Apple is very secretive about those types of things. Now, unlike everybody pretty much on this earth, I actually like the five C's cases with the dots, which offer an opportunity to sort of protect a device without covering up its style. Uh, but I also would have liked to have seen other patterns. So maybe stripes or diamonds. I'm sure these will show up in the future from other case makers. Uh, on the other hand, the iPhone 5S cases are awful. Um, as an iPhone user, I am disappointed. Offering muted and bland choices if you want anything official from Apple, these like kind of gross pastelish leather do not like. Uh, but I don't keep my phone in a case anyway, so I guess that really doesn't matter to me. Now, overall, Apple had what I would refer to as a whelming event. I wasn't overwhelmed, but I wasn't underwhelmed. I was just whelmed. And honestly, I think that's okay. Uh, I posted on Google Plus yesterday that I realized that no matter what major OS you're a fan of, whether it's Blackberry, Apple, or iOS, Android, or even Windows Phone, you have some really good flagship options available to you. So regardless of how much you love or hate the iPhone, uh, the 5S or the 5C, everybody out there should be appreciating that we as consumers are the ones who are totally winning this battle because of the choices that we have laid out in front of us when shopping for a new smartphone. And that's good stuff. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Leave your comments down below. Argue with me, disagree. I know a lot of you guys love Android and that's cool. You're allowed to do that. I know a lot of you guys love iOS. You're allowed to do that too. Hey, and you Windows Phone fans can also leave your comments down there. Blackberry, Tizen. If you're a Tizen fan, you're a WebOS fan, whatever you want, leave your comments down below. Tell me what you think of the iPhone 5S and the 5C. Uh, you can check out John's impressions of both Apple products in his videos that he put up the day of the event. And uh, I will be online reading all your comments. So be nice. And that's it for this time. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. What's up everyone? John here. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I certainly hope you did. Click on the subscribe button right under me in my pants region to get tons more tech videos from Techno Buffalo. We've got awesome unboxings, comparisons, reviews, recaps, and everything else you can think of in the tech world right here on the channel. Join the herd today! If you want to check out some more content, just click right over this way to see some other recent videos. See you guys next time.